Hey everybody, it's me again. So first of all, I have been doing a lot of listening to a concept of making habits, which is obviously not a new concept, um, but it's a mindset shift and that's talking about, you know, the things that you do every week and making them really habits. So this is an example of a habit. I'm actually on my way to New York today, um, but every week I have been posting a video to LinkedIn and so I gotta do it. You gotta do it when you can do it. So I'm doing it from the car in the New Haven train station parking lot. So this week I talk a little bit about uh, the topic of money and in my blog post, which admittedly is a little dramatic in its title and picture, but I talk about money and sort of the addiction that I think we have to it and the addiction that I know I had to it in the form of just this, you know, this comfort blanket of a biweekly paycheck. And, um, you know, I know, look, I get it. There's a lot of people struggling out there. And there's a lot of people in a position, though, that are, um, you know, not thinking about money in the healthiest of ways. I think now we live in a society where everything's instantaneous. You know, Amazon has something you want in two days. And with your paycheck coming every two weeks, you know, you can constantly have new things. And I think we just don't stop and think enough about not just to save that money for a new house or a renovation or a vacation, but how do we, how do we think about that saving that money for freedom or at least a period of free freedom where we can invest in understanding what other options do we have, what other different jobs out there, different companies or different purpose do we maybe have in life? And so if you read my blog, I talk a little bit about how um, my husband and I just happened to have what I call a detox at the same time in January, totally unplanned. Who would have thought that the same time that I decided to make a leap out of the corporate world, totally voluntarily, and giving up my um, biweekly addiction to a salary, um, my husband actually involuntarily, uh, since he works for the federal government, lost his paycheck for a month as well. And now you guys know how that turned out. They're back up and running and we're getting paid again. Um, but it was interesting. So in January, neither one of us received a paycheck after all of these years of dual income. And in the end, I think it was actually a really good thing. It helped us feel what it would feel like if we had kind of this most severe circumstances. And it made us very thankful that we haven't spent everything that we've made. I'm actually sitting in the same car that I had when I first joined uh, Payflex, my last job, and I still have it after being the CEO there as well. You know, so did, did we have great things? Were we able to, you know, live a good life? Absolutely. Um, at the same time we saved and that really helped us get through that detox period and not just feel what it would feel like to not have the money, but how would we react with each other? Would we freak out? Would we just get through it? And so I think it was a great test. So I just want to impress upon you, you know, when you think about, you know, your life and however many years, none of us know what we have left. But as you think about your job and, you know, many people are working to the bone and quite frankly, aren't happy in what they're doing, yet they, they worry about giving themselves even just the smallest breathing room or maybe not even taking time off, but taking some of that money and investing it in training and classes and exploring things that will help them see, you know, what else is there out there for them. So I just wanted to, you know, give that piece of advice, tell a little bit about my story. You know, I um, am making a whole lot less money than I was making in my corporate job and I couldn't be happier. And I am confident that I will get back there. And I'm so happy that I took this opportunity to, to detox and to feel what it's like and, and be okay with using a little bit of our savings. That's what 
that's what it's there for. It's not just there for, you know, buying new things. And I encourage you to think about, you know, what is your relationship with money? What is your relationship with your job as it relates to that? And, you know, again, I know so many of you are saying this is this is all all I have and I'm barely making enough to get by. And I even want you to think about is there a little bit of money that you could set aside to invest in exploring something new, invest in yourself, invest in figuring out what's next. So that's my message for the day before I head on the train to New York City. I hope you have a great day. As always, if you'd like to follow more of what I call the shenanigans at Be Authentic Inc., we send out a weekly email and love you to join our community to be the first to know about all the stuff we're working on. There's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that uh, those that have joined the community are getting information on. So you can join at B, that's just the letter B, AuthenticInc.com slash community, or you can browse through the website. There's plenty of places to put in your email address, and we'll make sure to keep you uh, informed on the inside scoop. So thanks for listening in. Have a great day.